Jeez. <laughs> hey guys. Okay, this is working. Today we have power. <laughs> Today we have power, we have light, internet's working, everything's popping. I'm really happy. Okay, so there's just a few of us in right now. I'm just gonna say hi, everybody. I'm gonna open this on my phone too because I realized for some reason I can never see the chat. I have no idea why, but I never can see it. And that's for fixing on another day. Another day. Anyway, welcome everybody. Today's topic is all about. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Echo, echo, echo. Sorry. Anyway, um, it's all about. Dating in Africa, or oh, dating in Uganda versus dating in Canada. Um, hi, Kara. <laughs> so I was so reluctant to this topic because I just feel like I'm not experienced enough in this um, topic area to be the person to be facilitating. But I figured and for me to be able to get more guests and people who are willing to come on my channel and talk about it, let me just be the guinea pig and then they can see it's not that serious. So I had asked you guys to send me stuff on Instagram. I think the day I announced it which was like Thursday or Friday. So we'll go through the Instagram story, like comments and questions that people were asking, um, as well as whatever you guys ask in the chat, I will answer as well. Um, but yeah, so let's wait for a few more people to come through and then I will get straight into the video. But just to um, do a little bit of like uh, housekeeping and stuff. So um, I think I mentioned this earlier in the month. I have a merch store. I had to take off the shirts because they weren't coming out properly and I didn't like that. So right now it's just everything else that's still off around there, but not shirts um, at the moment. But um, if you're interested in cool water bottles and like little accessories and knickknacks, that is available on there. What else? Uh, Patreon still also on a bit of a pause. Um, now we're in a lockdown in Uganda. Can't do as much as normally would, but um, yeah. So there's that, what else? Oh, people kept asking how to support the team and stuff. I felt kind of weird in the beginning, but then I was like, this is a business. <laughs> so in the description of all of my videos, every one of them, there's an area where you can support the team that helps with getting like better equipment. Someone came for me because I don't have a freaking, um, what is it? A gimbal or whatever. And I was like, then buy me one, boo. So if this guy, if that person is watching, there's a link. So everybody, I'll go buy a gimbal. <laughs> but yeah, so stuff like that. Anyway, hi, Susan. Okay, so I feel like we're starting to roll in. Uh, so let's get a little bit more into that. Now, I think I've touched on everything, right? Yeah, I've touched on everything I wanted to say in terms of housekeeping. But yeah, I'm going to keep this short and cute, like at most an hour. I just feel like I have 10 points to make, maybe like nine. Um, and including questions and stuff that people had asked. And other than that, I don't really see yeah, the need to continue further. It's such a juicy topic. So, um, yeah, welcome to KB's and Chai. I have my <laughs> teacup because that's the theme um, of these lives. And, oh, yeah, so I wanted to mention because we're locked up for, like, I think four five more weeks, I'll be doing this on Mondays and then, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about stuff. So next week's topic will be um, getting dual citizenship and the whole process of that because I'm such a headache and I feel like nobody told me anything. I had to figure it out myself. So if I can help y'all, why not? Okay. Anyway. Oh, Kara, thank you. Um, lockdown is okay. It's clearly not as strict as the first lockdown because the first one, I, like, I wouldn't even breathe outside past 7 p.m. <laughs> now people are driving everywhere. It's so weird. It's not obviously like the streets are not packed like before or anything like that, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's not that, it's not that crazy, but I'm, I'm home. So yeah. Um, anyway. Okay. So uh, I'm going to mention two things first. We'll start talking about two things and I'll answer some questions from the Instagram. Oh, but before, sorry, I'm so ADD. I have like, <laughs> I haven't done a live in so long. I wanted to live to Instagram that were live on YouTube. So people will know. Um, but yeah, sorry, before I get to that, so we'll first talk about like how it was dating in Canada and um, like my assumptions before and then how I felt like as I grew up and then how it's been dating here and like vice versa. Um, oh, thank you. My hair, it's so like bad at the bottom of the back. It's just like weird waves and things, but thank you. <laughs> All right, let me just go live on here to tell people that we're live. 
And we're five minutes in, so that'll give some people some time to come on in. But yeah, how are you guys doing? Leave something in the chat. Let me know. I'd love to um, have a little intro with y'all. Okay. Let's be live on Instagram. <laughs> Let's see how many people are actually going to. Okay. Hi, Instagram people. We're live on YouTube, but I'm just telling y'all this so you can come to my YouTube. But yeah, Tony Pro that you have started a live chat. That's nice. <laughs> They're coming. Good hating lockdown. Oh, you're oh you're hating lockdown. Yeah, because you can't do a lot of things we normally would do. Hi everybody who's on Instagram. Um, we're going live on YouTube. This is just me telling y'all to come live on the YouTube live. It's not gonna be on here. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, and then all right, so. Um, let's just get into the, sorry, into dating in, in Canada. So to be honest with you, I was such like a busy body person. So, um, <coughs> in Canada, like I was actually in a relationship for, uh, a bit of my twenties, like the middle part of my twenties. So like my later twenties, that's when I was more open and receptive to no I wasn't that open no I was very business minded I was like mm -mm, screw this like let's just get into oh thank you it's going because this ring light and it's hot <laughs> I don't want to start sweating anyway um so yeah so my later 20s I was just like about that paper getting my money like I was really about that but like people would ask me on dates and sometimes I'd say yes most of the time I'd say no and honestly like when you have certain requirements in life. I hate to say this because people are like, oh, if you have a checklist, you need to throw it out. And I'm like, it's not a checklist. People have standards. So you have certain standards and people just ask you any Tom, Dick, and Harry, you're like, no. So I went on a few dates with people that were considered like what I would say would be like my standards. And um, those are the people that I feel like were closest to my beliefs and what I vibe with, which is more of what African culture gives me than Canadian culture, you know what I mean? I hate to say it, people will come for me, it's fine. North America is very, it's it, the dating scene, it's the ghetto. Okay, it's the ghetto everywhere, but no, what, what irritates me about North America is this whole, like you just want me to struggle. You want, to, you want me to leave my family home to come struggle with you. What, what, what? <laughs> like you want to date me, you want to be with me, and you want us to struggle together. Like what is this? No, so anyway. Africa gave me more of what I would have, like what I believe in and whatever. So anyway, so dating in Canada was really interesting. I did meet some dope people, but I just don't think that they're, <laughs> the ghetto here is just the West. Oh, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, so in Canada, they were giving me a little bit better, like when I was leaving, sorry, when I got, when I got older. Um, but like, I'll just be frank with you guys without like beating around the bush. I'm not about 50-50 life. I just feel like if, um, as a woman, as a more, I want to say traditional, I'm like a traditional feminist in a sense. Like I believe in like the core values of, um, of femi feminism movement, like the core, like equal pay for equal pay for equal work. You know what I mean? Women have the, are equal, like as human beings, you know what I mean? But just generally this whole concept of splitting everything, whatever, doesn't make any sense to me, but that's a lot for a different time it has nothing to do with, well, not much to do with this topic. But anyway, I think that's more of what Canadian dating and Canadian life is. And personally, it, no, it's, it's a no for me. And, um, even just like values, familial values and things like that. I just, it wasn't my thing, but I was like, I'm Canadian enough and I really am sound in my beliefs and my values that it's okay. Like if I were to move to Africa, like I know I can raise my family and life would be good and whatever. Right. Anyway. So what I will say that I really preferred though in Canada is I feel like it was more of people are more emotionally mature and that, like the conversation was more deep it was more i don't know like how do you explain it more deep more about getting to know each other and people and whatever i feel like i'm like really sweaty guys anyway um yeah so that i really liked and i really miss so <laughs> So, so then um, coming to Africa, <laughs> I'm going to say Uganda because it's all I've lived in. That's all I know. So coming to Uganda, I feel like it was more, it's 
been interesting. So the few dates that I've been on, um, first of all, I felt like it was a lot of like the guy talking about himself. Like there were times where I was like, I feel like I'm in therapy. Like I'm the therapist, <laughs> just listening. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not qualified for this. You know what I mean? It wasn't um, an exchange of trying to get to know each other and be deep and even see if you're walking the same path of life with each other to see if you've shared the same core values and beliefs. It like, I just miss depth, like depth, you know? <laughs> and I just say like, what is this? So that's kind of what it's been here. Not everybody, of course, but just like the few dates that I've been on. And um, yeah, I think it's a bit, a bit of a challenge. And I think when you're from a society that like challenges you to think more deeply and to have more relationship with yourself. Um, and then you have someone who's just there and like doesn't even know like I'm like am I just sitting here am I like just a trophy like I'm just a plaque here and like you just want to hear yourself talk for two hours and then drop me home like this is really weird <laughs> um just a few bad apples <laughs> um I don't know about all that but anyway um yeah so that's been like my my little bit of an experience that I'm just like I don't know if I don't know I I, I haven't enjoyed that bit but i met really cool people though i've met a lot of cool people i met a lot of people where i'm like oh this is dope and whatever but like when it comes to actually going on a date and being out somewhere and wined and dined in the courting part and whatever i'm like okay cool <laughs> anyway all right so i think also my pre-thoughts of dating in uganda like i never thought i would i never thought i'd end up with uganda or anything like that to be honest with you like i think this is meant for like another live because it's so much unpacking to do but um okay i'll get into the comments in a bit i keep getting distracted um yeah i'll just like briefly mention it like i'm very much about energies and i i very much notice like but masculine and feminine energies and for me like I'm a person who operates a lot in their masculine during the day with work and whatever I'm always working and whatnot but I'm more in tune with my feminine energy my feminine side and like you know just like that's where I feel comforted at home and I feel like non-comfort me <laughs> but I feel like I got a lot more masculine energy um in North America than I, I that I'm experiencing here in Uganda and I don't think it's a continental thing um you said adventure out of town a bit then i'm where did i end up living in the village <laughs> Ivan, i don't know about all that anyway so um yeah and i just feel like it's a bit like i'm just more um used to men who are like if they want something they're going for it you know what i mean like it's like i want rachel what will it take for me to get with Rachel? You know what I mean? Where it's a bit more relayed back here. That's for everybody. I've noticed that with other people. People will be like, oh, I'm going on a date with someone. So I asked them how it went. And I'm like, common problem. It's like everyone has the same thing going on. Um, anyways, so yeah. So now, and also, to be honest with you, I'll be quite frank with you guys. This is an Africa problem in general. I think that um, it's a bit of a misogynistic society. I don't even know if a bit is the right word. It's just misogynistic society. So men get away with a lot of things that are just socially not acceptable in North America. Like it happens, obviously, that these things happen, but it's not as common knowledge and it's not as accepted. So I think that here men are allowed to do a lot of things. And I'm just the longest time I was like, no. And that's what I kind of equated with ugandan or just african men but i always knew i'm gonna end up with an african guy but i was like my one friend made a good statement this weekend i was dying when he said it when i was trying to explain to him i was like no i've only ever dated like west african guys and then he asked me why and he was like oh it's like that saying where it's like i'd rather um cry my lambo than cry in a <laughs> something else like it's so so funny but it was like yeah pretty much like you're both gonna cheat like, okay, it's a bad mindset. I'm, I'm going through it to like unlearn this and, you know, unpack it. But like, if I'm, if you're both going to put me through shit, at least put me through shit and I like gain something from it. You know what I mean? So that's how I kind of saw West Africa. It's, it's so bad to say, but it is what it is. <laughs> anyway, guys, sorry. I'm like, these lights are killing me. Um, let me see some comments right now. Have I ever been tricked into a date? Yes, I have. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I just read the hang and head person. Yes, I've been tricked into a date. Um, but more so when I was much um, younger. Um, in uni, I don't know if I was just too nice. Like, I don't know if I don't contribute a date now. I'll just be like, like, I'm out. But um, yeah. And bless you, it was by West African. They, I'm telling you guys, when they see something they want, they just go for it. They're like, no, that's like that energy is different. It just it's different. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so now now um my thoughts are that I live in Uganda, this is where I am, this is where my investments, my life, my everything. And I obviously want like an international life in terms of I live in Canada, I have family there as well, but like this is home now, so more likely than not, I'll end up with a Ugandan or someone who just lives here, but they're African. Just love Africans. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so I wanted to mention values in Africa versus values in Canada. Yeah, I feel like they're really different. I feel like you guys would also relate to this if you guys are African and living in um, North America. And I, please, I encourage you in the comments to like give me examples, but values are quite different. I think that, for example, um, <sighs> had the most hilarious clubhouse convo a few months ago with friends and um it was about africans but it was like west african versus east african versus southern african men but i remember the one thing that the west african guy said and he was like from when they are boys they're it's conditioned in them to take care of the family and it's like you can't be looking and like being you know looking good looking like your life is good and your family is just in the shits like you also need to bring them with you right so that goes in the realm of taking care of a household so it's like if he's taking care of himself he's also taking care of you right whereas i don't know if that's like conditioned fully but i think that's way where leaps ahead of north america wherever direction they're going i can't do that that's just weird it's not my thing um it's just it's really like it's really not my thing. <laughs> Just, I can't. Do you guys know a life of suffering? Because I don't. I'm not meant to. God did not put me on this earth to suffer, please. Anyway, um, also wanted to mention or talk about um, men and women in Canada. But I think I already said this. Let me see. Um, okay, yeah. One thing I will say is, like, I'm such a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying at the comments. I'm such an advocate for like women and women like getting into great places in life. Like I want to see us thrive everywhere globally. But I've also noticed that I'll be fighting for women. Then guys will tell me stories and like some batshit crazy story. And it's always in Uganda. I don't know why. It's always here. And then I'm like, damn it. I'm here trying to fight for y'all. And y'all aren't even fighting for yourselves. And you know what I realized? Confirmation. This is so funny. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> if you guys follow Anita Fabiola, she has these stories, um, in her IG. So she was doing that for the last couple of days in lockdown and the things people were submitting. I'm like, these can't be real. Like these, I, I've never even seen these in movies. Like this is just absurd. Um, so yeah, I feel like in Uganda, I wish women would value themselves more. I really, 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 really do. Like I really, really do. That's one thing I'm so grateful I grew up with and just knowing like me, like my value as a woman. And then as I got older, just stepping into understanding, like, what does that mean? And how will that reflect and show in my life? Because if I value myself, I move different. You know, I speak different. What I engage in is just different. My circles are different, you know? Um, but I don't think a lot of women are doing that here. And I'm like, you're so beautiful. Why are you, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> why are you suffering with these waste people for what? It's just crazy. Um, so yeah, um, I've noticed that and it's hilarious. It's so funny. I'm just like, okay. And then men, I just think here, um, yeah, it's just that the energy, it's the energy for me. I, I don't understand. I, I don't know. I'm like, just go for it. Like if you're into something, just go for it. Like I don't understand. <laughs> it's weird. So in Canada, I feel like we have more of that go-getter mentality, but lack of values. And I, I don't, I don't think anyone's unions have a purpose i'm like what is your main goal as a union besides love and that's why you'll find so many people are like freaking three times divorced two times divorced and i'm like i have nothing against divorce honestly if you're not happy leave but like you're never gonna find it in a person that's why you're constantly recycling people <laughs> so like figure out what it, like find happiness in yourself and loving yourself and then find someone who wants to do life with you um 
and also an agreement. Like, what is our main purpose as a union in this world? You know what I mean? But that requires depth, you know? And I'm like, bruh, that takes a lot for someone to look that internally in themselves. And I feel like we, that I'll say we have more of in Canada, but that that like, everything's based on this thing of just only love. And I'm like, that can't be your main thing, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> anyway, you can lie to yourself if you want, but no one wants to hear the hard truth. Um, okay, let me go into comments because there's so many things happening in here. Okay. Um, so this says that you read, I got my own house, but I'll be living in my man's. Right? <laughs> Thank you. So make sure you can afford your own lifestyle. God forbid someone just dashes you, somebody so dashes you somewhere. <laughs> And then you're just there, right? Make sure you can sustain yourself too. But like, if someone is coming to collect me from my family home, bruh, I didn't, be, I, I'm not here to be collected to go struggle somewhere, please. <laughs> make it make sense. Um, uh, as for guys, no matter where they're from, there will always be a shoe waiting to drop on your head. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> no, I think, honestly, I had to stop this whole mindset of like men are trash and like men are terrible. I really don't think so. I think human beings, like when they look more, do a lot more work and self and become more self-aware and actually do the work as a human, not just a man or woman, just a human being, you'll find that they'll become more they're more beautiful. Like you'll see their beauty come out. You'll see their true self come out. But there's a lot of people in that are not doing the work out here and trying to take up someone else's child in their home. Like, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the, you need to venture out of town a bit. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Me, you know where I'm living? <laughs> in the city, smack in the city. There's no way. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So have you ever been tricked into a date? Yeah, I was. Um, I, actually no I thought it was just once no a few times I don't understand people are very crafty I'm, tell, I'm telling you when a man won't knows what he wants he will go for what he wants ah <laughs> we're mad and I was just saying like no <laughs> um my problem is patriarchal mindset of Ugandan men yeah but it's not just men it's like it's women too. It's this idea, like it's like everybody has just taken on this conservative, weird view of life, and like we're just here to serve them, and they're just here to be kings. I'm like, but what have you added to my life, please? <laughs> That's what I mean about valuing self. But anyway, um, but also some Ugandan men are not straightforward or true about their intentions. Like, why don't they just say they want a good time? You know, in the West, people tend to be more honest. Yeah, that's true. But like, I feel like honesty requires more self-awareness or you just even asking the questions. I don't think you're going to be some deep Gandhi and that means that you're honest. Like, no. But I think that just like a little bit of just being like, you know what? I don't want to be with somebody right now. And that's cool. And you can communicate that. But I think also no one's being honest with themselves. So you have two people who are just telling each other lies and then, yeah. So I don't know. That's a lot of work. It, it requires work. People don't want to do work. So that's why we're here. In the trenches. Do you flag all DM date requests as red? Yeah, I don't. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> don't ask me out on DMs, please. It's never, ever going to happen. There's other ways you can figure out how to ask me out. Even, oh my God, you guys, I don't care if, I really don't care if people judge me. My big age of 30 now, I really could care less. Um, even text. If someone texts me and they're like, oh, like, we've been talking for a while and I want to take you out. Call me. Be like, Rachel, how are you? How was your day? Hear my voice for a little bit and then be like, oh, just like, I want to take you out. But I feel like that might, might be asking for too much in our generation. But that would be really nice and gentlemanlike. <laughs> just saying. Um, UG men need to talk about themselves to prove to you that they are capable of dating you. Get used to that as well. Especially they feel that you are all that made abroad so they have to prove to you yeah but like that doesn't really make any sense because are they assuming that they know me based off of my online like just on a persona you know what I mean because I'm only showing you nice parts on Instagram there's a whole slew of other things that are going on in my life which maybe my vlogs may touch on more but like even if you watch both of those you still don't know me like that <laughs> you know like it's not like I go deep at all of my things I share with you guys so I'm just kind of like 
you you can't sit there for two hours just talking about yourself. That's just crazy to me. <laughs> and it just hasn't only happened once. That's when I'm like, what's in the, what's in the water? What's in the Ranzori? <laughs> um, okay, let me see. The way you might can want a, to chew you and turn off their phones. I, <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> um, so, uh, what bills does love pay again? None. And that's what I'm trying to say. I'm like, there was some science. Okay, I don't think it was healthy, but it made a little bit more sense. This whole in the 1800s where it was like marriage was contractual. If you wanted love, that's a different story. But like, if you're saying I'm going to do life with someone, build an empire, raise children with, there's so many more elements to prioritize. It's not just that. Like that's beautiful and it's a component. It's a very important component. But like, let's be realistic. Is it, are you, are you going to have lights on <laughs> when you're just saying like, I love you, I love you too. And like, no, like no one can take care of each other. I like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, what about the way couples negative social media, uh, navigate social media in Canada? People put all their love life business on social media in Uganda. Your man won't post you unless it's your birthday or Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's so funny i want to post them either <laughs> okay so i personally think like there needs to be an in between you don't need to know everybody that i'm with and i i don't need to post them all the time and that's one thing that i wish i like people said more of in your 20s like in, especially yeah, in Canada, North America, we don't need to know every detail, like really and truly you don't. But I think there's a difference between a private relationship and a secret relationship. Hence why I feel like till I actually say I do, I don't think I'm just gonna be there gallivanting my man all over the internet. You'll, like I said, you'll see an elbow, you'll see a finger, see the back of a neck, <laughs> you know, while we're in, like Greece, just vacationing or something, I don't know. but. For me to like start vlogging and he's also now there vlogging with me and stuff. First of all, that other person probably didn't even sign up for this life. They're maybe not even into that. And I always attract guys who are not into social media. I don't know what it is, but they're not like, they'll maybe have like Twitter to keep up with news, you know what I mean? Or something like that. But like actual like Instagram and posting pictures, I for some reason don't attract those types of guys. So personally, it's like you're already not, like you're more of a private person now who am I to now just start showing you all over the place. It's a bit weird. But at the same time, and I said this before, I'll say it again. I think people are in relationships in Uganda and they don't realize they're not in a relationship, which is really, really scary and sad because I'm like, if someone isn't claiming you, that's messed up. Like that's that's not okay. That's just secret. Like <laughs> you need to reevaluate what the hell's going on in that situation. But Private, 100%. I think that's okay. I think that's totally fine. I don't think it's a, it can happen forever. Like at some point people will, you know, out and about, they'll know who you're with and whatever, which is fine. But especially early phases, I feel like you need to protect your space, protect your energy, protect your union. You're Now you have a union with a whole other person. It's like a baby. It's so fresh. It's so impressionable. It's so like, you know, like keep that as sacred for as long as you can. So personally, I'm just not a fan of just all over the place but I do think that someone will need to know because like my man would be my man I don't want to share you with somebody else so <laughs> I think people do need to know who he is but I don't think they need to constantly be seeing everything it's just weird it's just like can I have something for myself you know what I mean and I think everyone should kind of navigate in a way where protect your space protect your energy also and to going into this whole patriarchal thing again um, we live in a society where I've noticed this because people have told me like, just like from examples, whether it's themselves or things that have happened to people and just being like, um, once you're, you're a female, like you have, you've been dating all these people. Now it's like time for marriage. And then you're, the sangas are there and they're like, is this girl right? And it's so messed up to say, it. I don't think you should date differently because of your expectations of marriage or whatever. I just think just be private. <laughs> so nobody needs to know. No one needs to know who you were with, who you've been with, not things. No one's business anyway. So why share it? It's like unnecessary. Uh, so that's my answer to that. I, I am those people. I am those men of don't post you on my birthday and Valentine's Day. Happy birthday, babe. You just see his elbow <laughs> like a cake. <laughs> I'm the worst. Anyway, in Canada, girls pay their bill on a date. 
In Uganda, men just pay the whole bill. That is what makes them happy. If you pay a bill in Uganda, men will feel threatened. Yeah, but I just also, as a woman, I don't think you should be paying bills. Like, I think that's crazy. Do you want to know why? Because especially in Canada, and bless my sister, I think she's watching, or I don't know if she's still watching, but she always send me these, used to send me these things of like, um, it was like a blog where people were recently married or just getting married, and they'd, they'd anonymously talk about things or issues or whatever. It was so funny. So she used to send me like the most random things. But you would notice with married couples, like, why would you think that once you start doing something when you're dating and don't change it, it'll change when you're married? Just curious. Like, I would love, please, please, in the comments, people tell me what makes it different from dating than when you're married. Like, all of a sudden, there's a switch when you're married. So, if you were doing that and trying to be like, let me be that bitch when you're dating, what do you think is going to be different when you have three kids down and like you're not working as much because you're breastfeeding or taking care of kids or whatever? And now he's there, like, electricity. <laughs> car payments and you're like bruh i'm not even like you know obviously you can communicate with a significant other and things will you know um you can always have a plan and navigate whatever and that's all nice and dandy and whatever but just know and best believe whatever you're doing before is not going to change when you're married so that's what i that's how i feel on that i don't know i just don't think it's your place like you're as a woman there's so much you bring there's so much value and men bring a lot of value in things too but in my personal opinion as the woman that i am that is financial as well so yeah <laughs> um so many people don't like to talk about their finances before marriage that is baffling to me i get it too because it might be like oh maybe i'm not as like you know as established as they are or i'm not as put together or i wasn't as responsible whatever maybe i could see and understand the fear but regardless, it's going to come out. So these are things you have to talk about, period. And for me personally, as I am paying, she <laughs> um, uh, Rachel, I like your mindset. I try to tell all my friends, girls, to have that kind of confidence, but nothing maybe they should have been here for this. <laughs> they probably should have. But honestly, it depends on where they live. Are they living in Africa? Because it's more known that, you know, a man is to take care of his family. It's just known. It's just like, if you don't, even as I don't know, I'm not a man, I'm just assuming. Like, if you're that man and you're down there in your circles of friends and you're just like, you're just there, you're just useless. They all see you're useless. Like, I, I don't know. I know men work on egos and things. I would just assume that you're also like questioning yourself. You know what I mean? So, anyway, personally, I just know my role as a woman and as a, a future mother and as a future wife. And that is not my concern. <laughs> not my business. Uh, women shouldn't pay bills. If a man isn't ready to take care of a woman, he should either stay single and find someone within his means. Miss me with that. It should be my choice, not role. Yeah. And of course, like, and the problem too as well, I don't think people realize, I'm the type of person, and anyone can vouch for this, family, friends, former exes, whatever, that um, I'm, a, I'm a giver. I'm such a giver. So when I'm in a relationship, like, I'm also like, I'm so happy. I need to share it. And this person needs to experience the happiness too. So I'm like always doing little cute things or always getting them stuff and whatever. So yeah, I'm a person where I end up spoiling that person. So I also am realizing like I had to put boundaries and, and put these things in place. Like what is it? What was I saying? Standards. Um, I'm just realizing like, no, like it's cool. Like be that rich. Don't change, but add the fact that that you need to be taken care of because you know what you add. You know what you do. You know <laughs> the type of movie you are ah <laughs> so yeah there's that um oh i give good advice well thank you it's, this is really what i tell myself if it works for you it works if it doesn't that's okay too because some people would look at me and they're like what why but um yeah that's just how i navigate okay let me look up the instagram ones um can i date a uganda men yes i can Totally can. Um, I just feel like the other challenge as well, that is something that our reality I realized is um, I'm now blending two cultures. Like I always have been, but I was predominantly in North America, right? Now I'm predominantly here. There's a lot of things that like, I'm in just, I'm like, it's socially acceptable. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> that I'm realizing, first of all, there's a weight of my own family now. Cause it's like, this whole, if you're marrying it, someone, you're marrying into a family and they're also marrying into yours, right? Whereas North America is a little more individualistic. Like you can get away with like 
probably not seeing anybody in your family. It's just the two of you, it's all your love, just you and your man. But realistically, in Uganda, where? <laughs> it's never happening. So I have to consider like family, I have to consider so many other things. That's why I was like, date privately, that's my, my go-to. Um, the only person that I really want to introduce is someone where it's like, like I actually have plans to marry you, Rachel. I want to, like, this is a step I want to take. Okay, cool. Now you can meet family. <laughs> you can, you know what I mean? So um, there's that part. So yes, I'm down for you guys, man, as long as he's also aware that I'm still very Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm very, very Canadian. And there's a lot of things that will not change, but there's some things that may change. Uh, what does my therapist always say? It's adopt, adapt. Um, there's like four A's and they all sound the same, but there's, she's like, some things you'll file in this category. Some things you'll file in this one. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it's very, very evident. Some things I'm like, no. <laughs> you yeah, found me on my big age like this and nothing is changing. You know what I mean? Uh -uh. Oh, uh, all right. What does someone to ask? Am I in a relationship currently? No, I am not. Um, and like I said, when I will be, I don't think you guys will really know like that. But it's so hard because I'm such a person. I'm like, I'm so happy. The world needs to know. I'm so happy. I want everyone to be happy like me. But like, I'm like, no, I need to protect my energy. <laughs> um, do you see Uganda? What? I don't know what that question is. I'd like to take you out for a date. Well, <laughs> good luck. If you can find me to ask me, then kudos to you. I did your work. <laughs> Would you want to raise your family here or in, Uga in Canada? Um, so this is a fantastic question. Um, because I've relocated here and I'm happily here and I want to be here for, I really started out as business opportunities and like what I want to do financially and just for like myself, like my empire. Um, and then obviously I was like, okay, well now I'm older and <laughs> I'm happy to be here. The weather's good. Everything is good. Um, I want to, I'd rather raise my family here than in Canada, to be honest with you. But I think I mentioned this before, which is kind of now getting off topic. Um, uh, sorry, which is getting off topic, but uh, like the education system, that was one thing I was like, I don't know about that. And then also, I really like, I'm just saying this now, but because I don't have kids, who knows, but I don't really want my kids to go to boarding school. So I don't know how I feel about like them off somewhere random, but maybe they could do Canada like grade 11 and 12 or something like that. But no, raising as for raising a family, it would be here. Um, what else? Do I see myself marrying a Ugandan guy? I think that goes on the whole dating one. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind at all. Um, okay, let me see what other things you guys have in those comments here. You have a boyfriend? No, I don't. Have you dated a Ugandan man? And how was it? Okay, yeah. So no, I haven't. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> Commercial break. Um, no, I haven't. Um, like I said, I had a really bad um, view on them just growing up. I was always like seeing uncles and people that we knew and all these crazy stories like aunts would tell us about how guys were and I was like ah, ah if I'm going to suffer let me suffer my Lambo <laughs> so I just figured <laughs> at least someone else would spoil me at least shoot and I like I said I'm swapping that mindset of men are trash and all of that um so with that being said I had to obviously heal that side as well and I'm, now I'm just like ah, everyone can do anything bad to you anyone everyone anyone can be great to you as well so I just saw it as um yeah that I was just like no I'm I'm okay I'm okay with dating I'm marrying a Ugandan I'm totally fine it's just I had to you know when you realize you're dating and you have to heal your past you you're like what is it? it's staying in therapy but I don't remember what it is but basically um, this whole notion of like, yo, heal your inner child or like your wounded child or whatever. Once I started doing work on that, which I'm still doing, guys, like I'm definitely not 100% there. But um, I realized that like, yeah, this is all self-inflicted at this point. Like I need to relax. <laughs> but yeah. Um... <laughs> Sorry, people are so funny. Rachel, you're killing me. The day you put a man on your payroll, don't expect miracles from heaven. He'll milk you dry. I learned not to be a giver and put my purse in my bag. I don't run a charity. I am a bad. Right? So that's why I'm like, at least make sure, like, everything is good. Like, you know, the kids are good. 
everything is good. Like I'm happy, happy wife, happy life. You'll be the happiest man alive. I swear to you. <laughs> and like I said, I'm not just saying this out of my ass. People, there's people could do their research. Go ask former whomever is go ask family or ask friends everyone will tell you the same thing so me when you know i know my value i'm not just out here opening wallet for who for what why <laughs> it's crazy um spk lifestyle oh thank you oh thank you for the donation for the team look at us we're so close to gimbal now <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i sent sent me an email okay i'll check my email after it's been a bit a hectic few days um i also feel like most women in uganda have very low expectation yeah it's a lack of confidence but if you think about it if you grow up in a society that favors men and the view of men and making men comfortable no one's thinking about women no one's thinking about how to make sure they're comfortable, they're confident, they're happy, they excel in life. Of course, you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of women with low expectations, low self-worth, low value, all of that. It's crazy. And I always I always feel so bad. So I, I don't know. I feel like in the future I would love to do something where it's just like women and confidence. But I don't think people will be very happy about that. But I don't care. Like I'd rather like I want to see women flourish and the only way also to flourish in a relationship is if you're sound in who you are. But how would you know if you haven't even done the work to see who you are? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, hi, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Hi, you got a village wife. Ooh, you'd be interesting to ask questions <laughs> about that or ask questions too. Um, you got a woman needs to believe in themselves, expect and demand the best, raise that level and let them meet you there. Yes. And that's why I think also I push so much black luxury and all of that. Like I don't need to hashtag that all the time, but I do it on purpose. I don't need to be show like myself or my friends out and about like giving ourselves the best, but I do it on purpose because it's like, if you're capable of doing that for you, whoever you're with needs to match you or bring you better. If they're just not bringing you less than that, what was the reason? What was the reason? What's the point of being together? I just don't understand. And if by the time you can love yourself enough to spoil yourself and do the, have the best for you, you're going to do that for a partner. So they need to be worthy. And I just feel like a lot of women don't see that. And it's so sad because it really is, I've experienced it more in Uganda than I have in um, North America. But I, the North America, the only part that irritates me the most is the financial thing. <laughs> the financial thing and the lack of purpose in your union. I'm like, ah, so you just stare at each other lovey-dovey and then when that dies, then what? <laughs> um, like MJ Harris says, we are not here to play Bob the Builder. We are not Bob the Builders, guys. We're just not, it's never happening. Um, doesn't have to do with the kind of environment or people you keep up with around you because I see the friends you're around have you being more like you. Yeah, that's true. Like you're more of yourself. That's so true. Um, so you got a woman want someone so to be that they forget themselves and focus on the guy. No, that, never, 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 never. Like literally, please have your own life. <laughs> Have your own interests, have your own everything, you know? And that's what also scares me too. My mom always tells me this. And I think also I understand why people tell you to get married in your 20s. When you're in your, like now, I'm like when you're in your 30s as I'm only like six months in. But like when you're older and the older you get, the more sound and secure you are as you, you're just there like, oh, someone just comes with their crusty finger. Like, don't touch me. <laughs> just like, I'm just too good for this. Like you're mad. So I think that's why also a lot of, not a lot, but maybe that's why I'm still single. I don't know. Who knows? Who really knows but God and Jesus himself. But <laughs> maybe they're protecting me. Who knows? Um, oh, okay. So I think, oh, someone had asked me this. Like, where are the best places to go to, like, on dates and stuff where no one is? <laughs> like I've said already, be private. Not secretive, you know? Be, be private. And please... Also be dating people that aren't with somebody else. Like, let us start there first. Because <laughs> after reading Anita Fabiola's stories, I was like, people are really act here actively dating somebody and then making demands when that person is with someone. Like that person has a whole life with someone else. And then you have, you're demanding, you're like, oh, he's not faithful to me. What? what? It doesn't make any sense. So there's that. And then from there, um, I think like, 
there's so many really nice places, but then all those really nice places that I prefer to eat, there's always people. And then people are new business, people are talking, and eh, no one has time for that. It happens so much here. So I just feel like finding places that, like who does who said outside of town? Yeah, like outside of Kampala, like go somewhere else and go <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> Uh, in Tabe, I don't know. For Mukodo, like take me some ginger <laughs> for dinner and then bring me back. I mean, it's only an hour and a half drive. I mean, it's a long car ride though. You better be comfortable with each other. But yeah, that's how I see it anyway. For a while, or not for a while, for a bit. Um, okay, yeah, so I'll say like they're also like burdens, but I feel like that's not as much in... Um, Canada. So for example, like being 30, like I was talking to my friends this weekend, we had the funniest conversation. And um, I was like, Oh, ideally, like, I really like older guys. It's another thing that I'm trying to um, work through in therapy. <laughs> you know, my inner child, but I like guys who are like 40, because usually their, their mindset and sense is around my age. You get what I mean? So um, I was saying that and they're like, what? They're like, 40 and you're single what's wrong with you like as a man what's wrong with you what did you do like they were saying the most bring up the funniest things and it wasn't the first time someone had said that so like there's nothing wrong with that and i think it's so much more common for you to find a single older person in north america like i think it happens all the time people are so career focused and career driven They're like Dah, then by the time they have time to breathe it's like oh shit i'm 37 <laughs> you know so i don't think there's anything wrong with that but Apparently there is. So I guess here it's not as common. Um, hence then pressure. So I think this goes for both sides. I, I've heard men explain how there's pressures to be married, to be taken more seriously career-wise, which apparently is a worldwide thing, but it's just more in Africa. And then um, women where it's like, well, you're not getting any younger. Your biological clock is already pressuring you. Then your family's pressuring you being like, does anybody want to be with you? <laughs> like, why are you by yourself? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Stuff like that. So um, I think both sides have their pressures. I just think it's a bit less in North America. Like I said, we're more individualistic in North America. Like if you're a unit as two as a couple, you really could survive just the two of you as a couple. I don't think that's very possible here. Like people would be like, did you fall off the earth? Are you dead? Where are you? Like <laughs> your friends will be calling your family. Like everyone, you know what I mean? People are more in, more village like mentality, which I think is beautiful, especially when you're like raising a family and stuff. But when you're dating, I don't know about that. <laughs> Who knows? Like I said, guys, a very limited perspective and very limited experience. Just dating in general. Like I was more in relationships, but anyway. All right, let me answer some of these. Uh, don't you think it is hypocritical for women to have these financial roles and expectations of men, but feel oppressed when men reciprocate with their own traditional standards? It's like we can't win. But no, I don't think so. Because if, okay, you got in fiasco, if you could elaborate, that'd be great on what the traditional standards are. Because that's also like the realism of it. If you expect him to financially provide 100%, you also are taking on a lot of other things 100%. And I'm, like I said, I'm more of a traditional woman in a sense that I'm okay with that. I have no Allah figuring that out. I'm building an empire. So regardless, I'll have managed the home in a way where all of that will be taken care of. Like, you know what I mean? But I don't think people understand financial is like, yeah, like they take care of stuff financially, but just even my presence my feminine energy to calm you down after you've been making your millions all day <laughs> and now you come home <laughs> to your family and just even like that there's something to that as a woman that I can provide as a woman so that's so important I don't think people even care to even see that as value that's value adding to your husband's life you know what I mean so yeah of course you have to take on traditional standards but I don't think anyone's opposed to that but maybe you can tell me if maybe there's people who have been and they've said something otherwise. But personally, no, i gladly. Me, I'm like, I got that. I got us, babe. I got us. Just get us in that department. <laughs> um, not going to lie, 40 reminds me of receiving hairline and pot belly. What 40 have you been seeing? Oh, maybe I'm too much in like celebrity things or whatever, but I hear 40. I think of Idris Elba. I think of all these like beautiful, beautiful men. Beautiful. Mind you, also have to remind myself where I am, but <laughs> like I value working out. I value making sure my body's well and okay. So I hope my partner's on the same point. I think if you're having a receding hairline, there's nothing wrong with that. I just become bald. There's okay. <laughs> we move. <laughs> um, 
I agree. Women and confidence is important. I love gentlemen in 50s. Ladies, level up and move in silence. Yes. Level up, move, and thank you. Thank you, Sunday um, Omoni. Sorry if I say it wrong. Yes, yes. Gentlemen, like I miss, like as though I experienced that era, but I, I love, like just the gentleman era, like a gentleman, just a gentleman. I just feel like I don't even need to describe what that is. We all know that someone moves that way. It's beautiful. It's a different type of energy. And they allow you to move so freely in your feminine that you just are so at calm. You're so peace and or at peace and calm. And you're like, whoo, like I got this. Like I like life is good. And then you also now want to give to them more because they allow you to be you in your space with your energy. You guys, <laughs> there's something to it. I'm just saying, but. No forcing things on other people. <laughs> he is a dusty. Who's a dusty Maggie? Yeah, I did, maybe it was something we were saying earlier. Um, but yeah, so all in all, I will say, and I also don't want to go over an hour. So um, I will say that um, dating in both has its pros and its cons for sure. Um, but like I live here now, so I've had to embrace certain things. And that's why I'm very avid, avid person about therapy as well. Because <laughs> I think when you're so set in certain ways and you move to a whole different place. Yeah, I grew up with the same uh, values culturally and all of that. But they weren't as deeply rooted and instilled because I'm, we're blending a whole other culture and background. So there's so many little things, like even how I dress, I'm like, am I ready to change that? Cause I'm really not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Things like that. Oh, Sunday, thank you so much for contributing. Look at us, we're so close to our freaking a, a gimbal. You guys are just so sweet. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Sorry, about Canada versus, or like North America, but yeah, Canada versus um, Uganda. But yeah, I wouldn't change it. Like I. I would also really, really love to end up with Ugandan just because culturally, it's just like, there's no explanation, just blends so well. Like it's my upbringing, it's what I know. It may not be like the Canadian part because that's very much a, a big part of who I am as well. Um, but it's still that part, like the main foundational tradition, like, sorry, viewpoints and things I believe in and whatnot that I would want like my children to be raised in and, and whatnot. So that I think, is important and i think that that would be great if i end up with you gunning guy um but also on the flip side like being canadian <laughs> there's certain things i'm also like Bleh. and i'm also you guys don't realize too like i'm in a country where women are a lot more quiet they're more reserved hence low confidence and low value and low self-esteem um so they're more, yeah, they're more quiet. They're more like, oh, I can't do this just because if someone sees me or if, if whatever, whatever may happen, that I come here with my fucking wrecking ball. I'm sorry, I said I wasn't gonna swear. Just coming in like with my big personality, like, hey, I'm here, uh-huh. <laughs> no one can tell me nothing. All these things that I'm like, yo, is someone gonna be able to handle that? Like, it's gonna be so funny. And um, I was talking to um, someone actually on my street because like my whole street knows me. My grandma was here, and then my mom was born here, and whatever. So my whole street um, knows me. So we're, I was sitting outside talking to someone, and um, he was just jokingly being like, "Oh, I can't wait till we can marry you, and I'll bring my you know, cows to your parents, or whatever." Like just jokingly saying this stuff. So then I was like, "Oh, wouldn't I be a lot?" He's like, "No, but I can see like for two reasons why." I was like, "Oh, what are these two reasons?" I forget what the second one was, but the first one definitely was him being like. Oh yeah, like a guy, a guy could definitely be intimidated by you just because of like how your personality is and how you are and like how you know what I mean and your your confidence and how you move. And I was like, damn, interesting. I was like, okay. And then there's I wish I could remember what the second thing was. It's equally as funny, but um, yeah, I was just there like this is hilarious. Like anyway, <laughs> so yeah, those are the things that ponder on my mind sometimes at night. Um, let me answer a few more things before wrap this up my husband is 20 years older than me oh i love that <laughs> black luxury femininity and homemaking are important to me yes girl i'm ugandan too i'll be there next year a love from canada oh we need to be oh i understand girl i love this that's really me i'm just like y'all don't understand i have no quarrels with the everyday like wife life you know, but happy wife, happy life. That's the part that needs to be highlighted. <laughs> if I'm happy, you'll be the happiest man to the day you die. You'll be smiling in your grave like I lived a good life. <laughs> but just don't piss me off. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> on the flip side. Oh, I'm so dead. And then also growing my empire is very important. Um, what else? Love from the United States. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Patrick. We're trying out here. We're trying in this lockdown. Um, Regina, honestly, this intimidation topic tends to make ladies put up an act they can't manage to please their spouses and in-law families, but end up with no peace at all. Intim intimidation, like um, men feeling, oh, like when men feel intimidated, so a uh, woman downplays how she is, right? Like you, like kind of, um, you're not your true self just to appease him. And then, yeah. And then there's no peace exactly. Like how you found me is how I am. But like, obviously I'd understand you know, when you're doing life with somebody, you do have to consider the other person um, every step you take. I understand that. That's fine. But like changing your personality, your core beliefs and who you are for another person, that's madness. Absolute madness. No. I was like, I'm not 21 and impressionable. Like, nah, that's crazy. <laughs> no, they can't be doing that. Um, should men tell that should men tell that they have kids and have secret pro or have secret properties on a date or wait? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I feel like you should always say that you have kids. That's another part of private versus secret. Like your kids should never be secretive. They should definitely be like, but I feel like also get it out of the way early. I'll give you guys a little example of, I always, this is one of the last stories that are dating experiences. I went on. I was just so Funny, but I'm not gonna say the whole story, but I'll tell you a bit, bit of it. Um, anyway, I met this guy, amazing guy. He was from, I wanna say Senegal. Senegal, he worked in the financial sector in Toronto area, like great guy and whatever. He was really nice. We met at an event where so we were like dancing and whatever. And I, but this was my phase where I was like, I was not about dating. <laughs> Everybody knew that. I was like, I'm about my money and my paper. Like I was like, I'm not about dating. But I was like, wow, this guy checks off like so many boxes for me. So then um, I think, I don't know if we texted much, but it was like, he was like, oh, I would love to take you out. So I was like, okay, cool, fine. Um, and at the time I wasn't living in the city anymore. So I was dating at my sister's. So she was like, her husband was like, oh, we're so excited for you. You never go out, you never go out anywhere. You're too beautiful to be home, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna overhype myself, but I was like, okay, cool. I'm going on a date, haha, <laughs> fun. So I ended up on the date and then I'm a person and this is a topic for another day, but whatever. Um, perf preferably, I prefer someone who doesn't have kids either, right? Because I don't, and it's a long story why, but anyway, um, that's just my preference. So we're on this date, and or I'm on this, yeah, I'm on this date, and the guy, um, <laughs> we're, we're talking, talking, and like we had talked for a bit, like not a long, long time, but maybe like a week and a half. So there's enough combo that was happening. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, so my three month old baby, I was like, three month, what? Like it was just, it, from that moment on, the entire night just went spiraling down. Not because he had kids, just that whole secretive thing. Where I'm like, it's just say all you need to say that's important to you in your life in the beginning and let the person decide. So I am, I'm not okay with secret kids, that's weird. And secret properties, what's secret properties? Because it's, I mean, if you're just dating somebody, what they have and what they own is their business. But obviously when it gets serious, you do have to have a conversation of what do you own? How is your, how are your finances? What do you make? Like you'll obviously have to have those combos later down the road. So I don't know if secret properties refers to that. I have no idea. Um, uh, do I do you feel adjusted to UG now? Yeah, I feel like I am. Um, I always said I would only live here if I could like travel and see other things, and I haven't been doing that, so it's been driving me crazy. I do need to leave for a little bit, uh, for like a few weeks and come back. But yeah, I feel like I've adjusted. I would prefer to be a hundred percent settled in, but I think now I've talked to so many repats, as I realize we're called. It takes some time to get to that point. So I'm like, okay, I understand. <laughs> Um, do you think lockdown will be done by December so we in America can come? It's ghetto. <laughs> I'm dying because I always say America is a ghetto. Like America? America? No, not for me. But like for vacation and just for like, you know, yeah, I don't know, just for just maybe my kids could go to school there, but I'm like, why don't you go to Canada for mad cheap? You know what I mean? But like America, America, yeah, I hate to say it to y'all, but it, I understand. I definitely get it. I, I get it. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna be done by December because that's my birthday and a girl's trying to turn up. Dutty December, peace, you know what I mean? So yeah, <laughs> this is fun pushing me through this lockdown. Thank you, me too. I have, you know when you live, a, like you're just living 
by yourself. No one to talk to like that. I'm like, this is fun. We can talk about, I'm like, what's our next subject? <laughs> Be next week though. If I stay on this for too long, you guys will get bored with me. <laughs> um, yes, I prefer people who don't have kids as well when I was dating. Yeah, it's just honestly, it's a lot of responsibility that I could fully say I am not ready for, nor will I ever be. And it, it takes a lot because people used to think I was like an evil woman. And I realized, I hate to say it, those people's backgrounds and where they were coming from, I could see because it was more normalized. So to them, they're just like, how, why wouldn't you? It's just a normal thing. But I'm like, not for me. And then I was just like, self-awareness, self-reflection and who I am. I was like, I, I'm not equipped for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm not talking down on anyone who does that. Just me personally, me as me. I'm not equipped for it. And I hope people will respect that. <laughs> no to seek your kids big red flag yeah like why are you hiding your children it's very odd i don't understand totally get it from the world but someone that you're romantically interested in why would you hide your kids i don't get it it's i just anyway <laughs> um uh, okay someone said there are so many white women homemakers but when a black woman does it you're labeled lazy or gold digger yeah but that like guys that is a topic for another day that i would love to divulge in because that's an area i'm so interested in but when the world does not want to see black feminine women they are very much about the black woman ride or dies she holds the back of the family she's in the trenches they're digging in the and i'm like why like that's okay but like that's not our only story there's so much more depth to us it's okay from a feminine woman <laughs> so yeah you're so right and you were labeled as a gold digger you're lazy but it's like nobody said we didn't have our own goals and aspirations too i always tell anyone who comes my way asking me anything i'm like make sure you have your own baby girl <laughs> make sure you're also good Oh, it's fine if he has so much more than you, but make sure you're good for you as you. You know what I mean? Like, you can take a, take care of you. Now, I don't think there's anything gold digger about that. That's just common sense. <laughs> there was this thing I saw on YouTube. I wish I, I remembered the link. And it was this guy, um, this millionaire man, and he was like, what is wrong with a woman gold digging? Yes, you should be digging for gold. Us men dig for gold. Where they're digging, making sure we financially are good. You too, you dig for gold. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much saying there's nothing wrong with that. And I was just there like, okay, the label has a very negative connotation, but like make sure you as a woman, you're set, you're good in life, you're happy with where you're at financially, emotionally, and your maturity, everything, like you're good. And then there's nothing wrong with wanting a guy on that level or more, you know? But anyway, people will come for your neck, girl. <laughs> um very Canadian and very good, and I smell a clash of cultures, but I know you are humble, girl, and flexible. If I was a man, I would do anything to cope with you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm very good, and I'm very Canadian. Even me on a daily basis, I internally clash. So I'm like, this is going to be so funny when someone son just comes and collects me. <laughs> Um, I love your videos on buying land and you got them. Me too. Thank you. I'm totally off topic, but yeah, me too. And I really want to keep doing them in lockdown. I'm looking on figuring out how to get a freaking pass to move around and continue working. But anyway, um, just hoping this live doesn't end. Well, unfortunately it is coming to an end because it is now an hour in. I don't want to be more than an hour. You come, oh my God, I love that this is the last bit. Uh -huh. You come across to be very expensive to maintain. Bruh, if I can maintain my own lifestyle, I'm only attracting a man who can maintain it two or more. <laughs> Baby, not everyone can afford everything. You walk into Louis Vuitton, if you can't afford the bag, walk out. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's many people who can go and afford to maintain that Louis bag. You know what I mean? Or Hermes. You walk into Hermes, the bag is $30,000. You know yourself, you cannot afford that. Walk out. But there are people who can drop that like it's nothing and be like, like it's not a, not a single thought in their bank account. And that's okay. I think people need to be okay with the fact that you're not for everybody. And that is fine. I know my value. I know my worth. I know what I bring. I know. Ah, you guys. I've struggled in this life. I'm not continuing to struggle. I know who I am as a woman and what I bring. So there's no way that now I'm just going to go and just someone's son just comes and I struggle. Ah, you're mad. So yeah, I am exp expensive to maintain, but I've been happily maintaining myself. So that invites anyone to also now <laughs> continue on with the maintenance or and bring me up. Like as much as he'll bring me up, I'll bring him up. It's the same thing. I don't understand. I don't know where the, 
um, where the misunderstanding is. I don't know. I don't know why people think it's like not possible. I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. Not all of us are dreamers. We don't all dream and think big. It's fine. <laughs> yes, my sister, make sure you get your financial house in order. Yeah. Man, you have your own money. It makes you more secure. Yeah, exactly. And it will, you will be able to just filter out the bullshit too. So, you know, I'm like, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm doing well. If I want to go somewhere, I can also go somewhere. There's nothing wrong with me being like, I want a guy who also will be able to be on that playing field. Nothing wrong. I will say, though, on the other flip side, realistically, you guys, the pool becomes so much smaller. I'm very much aware of that. And I'm very much aware that my expectations can be considered very high. So I do know that there's maybe some things I have to have wiggle room over. But that was one thing that's foundational, so just saying <laughs> um and also i live in uganda now the cost of living is so low here you guys so it doesn't take much i would shoot anyway i think that brings our lives to an end thank you so much to all of you who supported to the team efforts of getting a gimbal <laughs> i really appreciate that because i wasn't expecting it so thank you so much sunday svk lifestyle thank you guys so much for all of you guys with your amazing questions you guys are hilarious we should do this like, like a part two i'm gonna bring a, like a guest here that's essentially what i want I just feel like all my friends make it sound like it's so bad. I'm like, no one, you don't need to answer anything personal. You guys, I didn't really, I, I, I knew I was going to do this, but I knew I wasn't going to go start name dropping people I've been seeing or someone I've seen or whatever. Like, that's just crazy. We're not about that. We're classy people over here. Babies and shy guys. Like, we're a classy bunch. But um, <laughs> it's been fun. Um, so next week's topic will just be um, going back into the whole movie to Africa series, and it'll be a live, but about the dual citizenship process. So for those of you who are interested in that, um, what is this gimbal she keeps talking about? Camera equipment, because people said my uh, my videos are too shaky. And I was like, wow, I need to go buy this little stabilizer. Contribute that shoot. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so next week's topic will be about dual citizenship. So next Monday at 7 p.m., I will see you guys here live on my YouTube. Other than that, catch me on Instagram, stories, Snapchat, all that fun stuff. All info is always in the description box below. If you haven't bought merch, which I should have worn today, but I'll wear it in the next video, um, there's um, mugs and um, water bottles and fun and things like that. It's summertime, so it's a perfect time for everybody to be well moisturized with their water, buy a water bottle. I don't have one here, but when I do, I'll put it here more like the shopping network. Um, what else did I wanna mention? Yeah, thank you for all of you who've donated. Thank you guys for all of your amazing, amazing questions. I do, you know, this is fun, this is interactive. This helped my boring, boring lockdown. Um, yeah, and if you have suggestions for any other future topics to talk about, about like more like tabooish in a sense where it's like, living in north america versus living in africa if you have any topic suggestions also let me know my dms are always open for people who are coming correct and i'll close on that <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next week see you next saturday or see you next monday at seven <laughs>